One night, in the ancient days well before the floods of Noah, Nimrod, who was a powerful ruler of the ancient kingdom of Babel and his astrologers saw a portent in the stars predicting the birth of a child who will end idolatry, Abraham. In a desperate attempt to prevent this, Nimrod orders the unalifing of all newborn babies. However, Abraham's mother manages to escape into the fields, where she gives birth in secret. As a young boy, Abraham recognizes the true God and begins to worship him. Courageously, he confronts Nimrod, urging him to abandon his idolatry. Enraged, Nimrod orders Abraham to be burned at the stake. In some versions of the story, Nimrod commands his people to gather wood for four years to build the largest bonfire ever seen. But when the fire is finally lit, Abraham miraculously walks out unharmed. Before we talk further on Nimrod's encounter with Abraham, let me start the story of Nimrod from the beginning. Once upon a time, in the ancient land of Shinar, there lived a powerful figure named Nimrod. While the Bible doesn't directly name him as the leader, Jewish and Christian traditions often attribute him as the mastermind behind the infamous Tower of Babel. Nimrod ruled over a vast kingdom, which boasted cities like Babel, Erech, Akkad, and possibly Kelna. According to the ancient historian Flavius Josephus, it's believed that Nimrod kickstarted the construction of Babel and its towering structure. This belief is echoed in various Jewish texts, including the Talmud and later Midrash like Genesis Rabbah. Some even claim that Nimrod and the king Amraphel, who later clashed with the biblical figure Abraham, are one and the same. Nimrod first appears in the Bible in the Table of Nations. He is described as the son of Cush, the grandson of Ham, and the great-grandson of Noah, known as a mighty one in the earth and a mighty hunter before the Lord. Nimrod's reputation is one of strength and prowess. This description is echoed in the first book of Chronicles 1.10. Additionally, the term land of Nimrod is used as a synonym for Assyria or Mesopotamia and is mentioned in the book of Micah 5 verse 6. In Genesis, it is stated that the beginning of his kingdom included the towns of Babel, Erech, Akkad, and Kalna in the land of Shinar, or Mesopotamia, Gen 10.10. This phrase has been interpreted to mean that Nimrod either founded these cities, ruled over them, or possibly both. There is, however, an ambiguity in the original Hebrew text, making it unclear whether Nimrod or Asher built additional cities such as Nineveh, Rezin, Rehobothiar, and Kala. This ambiguity is reflected in various English translations of the Bible. Sir Walter Raleigh, in his History of the World, 1614, dedicated several pages to exploring the scholarly debate over whether it was Nimrod or Asher who constructed these significant cities in Assyria. Now, back to the encounter between Nimrod and Abraham. In Jewish and Islamic traditions, there's a fascinating story about a dramatic encounter between Nimrod and Abraham. According to these stories, their meeting represents a grand clash, symbolizing the eternal struggle between good and evil, or the battle between monotheism and polytheism. In some other versions of the story, Nimrod and Abraham engage in an epic showdown, while in others, they simply have a profound discussion. Scholars K. Van der Thurn and P. W. Van der Horst have traced the origins of this tradition back to the ancient writings of Pseudophilo. The myth also appears in the Talmud and was elaborated upon by medieval rabbinical writers. In other versions of the story, such as those by Flavius Josephus, Nimrod is depicted as a powerful man who defiantly opposes God. In others, Nimrod goes even further, proclaiming himself a god and demanding that his subjects worship him. His consort, Semiramis, is sometimes also worshipped as a goddess alongside him. Yet in some versions of the story, the conflict between Nimrod and Abraham escalates into a battle. Nimrod, leading a massive army, challenges Abraham. However, Abraham, with divine intervention, summons an army of gnats. These tiny creatures swarm over Nimrod's forces, decimating his army completely. In another twist of the story, a single gnat or mosquito finds its way into Nimrod's brain, driving him mad. This act of divine retribution mirrors the fate that Jewish tradition also ascribes to the Roman Emperor Titus, who destroyed the temple in Jerusalem. In some versions of the story, Nimrod has a change of heart and repents, acknowledging God's supremacy. 
He offers numerous sacrifices to God, but these are rejected, much like the sacrifices of Cain in the Bible. Other versions present a different resolution. Nimrod, seeking reconciliation, gives Abraham a gift. This gift is the giant slave Eliezer, who some accounts describe as Nimrod's own son. In the Bible, Eliezer is mentioned as Abraham's faithful servant, though no direct connection to Nimrod is made, Genesis 15 verse 2. In yet other versions of the story, Nimrod continues his rebellion against God or even resumes it after a brief pause. Abraham's pivotal decision to leave Mesopotamia and settle in Canaan is sometimes seen as an escape from Nimrod's vengeful pursuit. While canonical accounts, like those in the Bible and the Book of Jubilees, place the construction of the Tower of Babel many generations before Abraham's birth, other versions suggest it was a later act of defiance after Nimrod's failed confrontation with Abraham. In some of these stories, Nimrod doesn't stop after the towers collapse. Instead, he attempts an even bolder act. Determined to challenge God directly, he tries to storm heaven in a chariot drawn by birds. The story of Abraham intertwines elements from other biblical narratives, adding layers of depth and symbolism. Abraham's tale echoes the story of Moses' birth, where a cruel king orders the killing of innocent babies, reminiscent of Pharaoh's decree in Egypt. Similarly, Abraham's miraculous survival in the fire parallels the experiences of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fiery furnace, showcasing divine protection. Nimrod, in this narrative, embodies the characteristics of two infamous kings, Nebuchadnezzar and Pharaoh, known for their cruelty and persecution of the innocent. Some Jewish traditions even draw parallels between Nimrod and Cyrus, the Persian king, whose birth was also accompanied by portents, leading to attempts on his life by his own family, as recorded by Herodotus. The Quran also recounts a confrontation between a king, not named explicitly, and Ibrahim, Arabic for Abraham. While the Quran doesn't mention Nimrod by name, some Muslim commentators identify him as the king in this narrative. In this Quranic tale, Ibrahim engages in a dialogue with the king, Ibrahim argues that it is God who gives life and causes death, while the unnamed king claims these powers for himself. To prove his point, Ibrahim challenges the king to bring the sun from the west, as God brings it from the east. The king is left baffled and enraged by this logic. Commentaries on this surah provide various embellishments to the story. For instance, Ibn Kathir, a prominent 14th century scholar, adds that Nimrod demonstrated his authority over life and death by executing one prisoner and sparing another. Throughout Jewish and Islamic tradition, Nimrod retains his status as a symbol of ultimate evil, a figure representing idolatry and tyrannical rule. In rabbinical writings spanning centuries, Nimrod is consistently depicted as Nimrod the evil. Regardless of whether some interpretations suggest he may have repented later in life, Nimrod's legacy remains deeply rooted in his portrayal as a malevolent character, an archetype of wickedness, idolatry, and oppressive kingship. Nimrod's name appears in several places within Baha'i scriptures, notably in the Kitab Ikan, a central theological text of the Baha'i faith. Here, it is recounted that Nimrod experienced a significant dream, interpreted by his soothsayers as a prophecy of a new star in the heavens, heralding the arrival of Abraham. According to Baha'i teachings, a messenger subsequently emerges, announcing the imminent appearance of Abraham. This narrative underscores themes of divine providence and the unfolding of prophetic destinies. Additionally, Nimrod is referenced in the writings of the Bab, an early figure in the Baha'i faith. In one instance, the Bab highlights God's power by invoking the triumph of Abraham over the forces of Nimrod, illustrating the divine intervention in human affairs. The story of Abraham's encounter with Nimrod transcended scholarly works and religious texts, leaving its mark on popular culture as well. A prime example of this influence is found in the folk song, Quando el Rey Nimrod, when King Nimrod, one of the most beloved songs in Ladino, the Judeo-Spanish language. This ballad, believed to have originated during the reign of King Alfonso X of Castile, vividly portrays the legendary confrontation between the two figures. The song opens with evocative lines, when King Nimrod went out to the fields, looked at the heavens and at the stars. 
he saw a holy light in the Jewish quarter, a sign that Abraham, our father, was about to be born. From there, it weaves a poetic narrative of Nimrod's cruel persecutions and Abraham's miraculous birth and heroic deeds. Through its captivating lyrics and timeless melodies, Quando El Rey Nimrod serves as a cultural treasure, preserving and celebrating the enduring legacy of this ancient tale for generations to come. Thank you for your support.